Hey everybody, welcome back to part 2 of block 1 of block of the month. We are over at the ironing board where we're going to press out our pieces that we just sewed. So uh, get out your iron, turn it on high. Uh, don't worry, you won't burn anything uh, unless you leave it sitting there and then it's going to burn, but uh, we're not going to do that. <laughs> so we're going to press these middle parts first and we are going to press towards the orange and um, on the batiks, you'll be pressing towards the green. So nice, uh, nice hot iron. We're lifting and pressing. Lift, press, lift, press. Don't uh, rub fabric. That's a general rule in, in quilting. We're not ironing a shirt. We're ironing fabric. So there's a little bit of a difference. So lift, press, lift, press. Very, very important. <laughs> so you don't want to stretch your fabric. Uh, both pieces are ironed the same way. That's also very important. So make sure you're ironing towards the orange on each one or towards the green on each one if you're using batik. Now we're going to do our flying geese. And I'm going to show you two different ways to do this. One is you can approach this from the top side. And you can see I'm going to put my iron down on the cream and gently pull the blue away gently pull the blue away so we can press out that seam. I'm going to say gently about 50 more times because you really need to pull this gently. Don't um, don't manhandle it because uh, you will stretch your flying geese and it'll look really bad. So uh, here we go again. Gently pulling. This time I'm going from the back and we're pushing the seam towards the square, so uh, or towards the dark square. Whenever you're doing flying geese, you want to press this way. I'm going to flip it over to the top, and we're going to press again. Make sure everything's nice and flat. Pressing is really important to quilting. Uh, make sure you take time, do it right, make sure everything looks good. Starch if you want to. I'm a big believer in starch. So, uh, now that we have all these pressed out, let's go back to our sewing machine. Okay, we're back at the sewing machine. I've got an A foot on. We're going to put the other side of our flying geese on. So we're going to stick our block on the opposite end of the flying geese. Matching up the corners really nicely. Uh, making sure it's pointed in the correct direction. Uh, just follow my visual here. And uh, since I was struggling a little bit, I'm going to um, pin these in place because uh, I'm a bit of a doofus <laughs> when it comes to sewing with a camera in between me and the sewing machine. So in order to not embarrass myself completely, I'm going to pin these in place. We're going to start sewing at uh, the middle of the block, just like we did last time. Remember, we want to start in the middle and not on the corner so our fabric does it get eaten by the sewing machine? So the sewing machine has something significant to hold on to. I'm also going to put a leader fabric down. You want to put your leader fabric in, stitch a couple stitches, and then uh, leave the needle down. My machine stops with the needle down automatically, which is really nice. Um, <laughs> if you have that feature, it's wonderful. You know what I'm talking about. We're going to sew down our drawn line. And again, our A foot has that really nice valley there. So we could just put the line uh, in the valley and sew. And we're going to chain piece once again because uh, we've got four of these. And this one I didn't pin. And um, you're going to see, oh gosh. <laughs> If it's a little inaccurate, everybody forget what you just saw and uh, pin your squares down. <laughs> so we're going to do all four, <laughs> all four of these with a 1.8 stitch length or as close to 1.8 stitch length as you can get. Uh, this is just going to help with sturdiness of your block and all that good stuff. So we're going to sew the middle parts together now and I'm going to just lay this out for you so you can see my process and how I put stuff together. Uh, when I'm pinning things, I like to arrange them how they're going to go so I can flip them and know that they're in the correct position. Just a little thing that helps me keep straight. Uh, might help you keep straight too. So remember, we ironed these pieces so they were going towards the orange, uh, both of them. And here, we see that because they're both uh, press in the same direction, we can nestle them together, which will help them meet up in the center. 
and look really nice and clean and, and all that good stuff. So pressing was pretty important. So now it's really helping us out. So I like to pin, I like to put two pins in on a seam. One before the seam and uh, one after the seam. This helps it not shift under the foot while it's going through because uh, stuff can shift pretty easily. So um, putting pins in is important. Some people like to put the pin in uh, and right into uh, the seam itself. I'm putting pins, uh, extra pins in here too because I don't want these ends to shift either and I don't want to <laughs> I don't want to uh, do doofus sewing in front of the camera again. <laughs> so, lesson learned. Uh, now we're going to put it under the um, sewing machine, and I've got a quarter inch foot here. It's a clear view quarter inch foot, which I really like. It doesn't have a guide on it, so you actually line up with the edge of the foot. But I, actually, I like it because it's easy to get a scant quarter inch out of this foot. We're sewing with a 1.8 stitch length again. Uh, all parts of my quilts have 1.8 stitch length. Um, the small stitch length really helps you out. I'm gonna put a liter fabric down and uh, press my start stop button and sew down. Now, I do have a tendency to sew over pins. I do this because I, especially on seams, I don't want them to shift and uh, so I will sew over pins, but here is your warning. If you sew over a pin, you can break a needle or you can potentially throw your machine out of time, <laughs> which is kind of a big deal. Uh, so, yeah, I know my machine can take it. Yours might be able to too, but uh, just, you know, here's your warning. Uh, so you, you could come up with uh, what you're gonna do on your own. Just don't, no angry emails going, I sewed over pins and this is what happened. <laughs> so um, now we're going to check out this uh, middle section, make sure nothing shifts and everything lined up nicely for us. And it did. Thank goodness. I promise this was my first take. Okay, now we're back at the ironing board and we're going to press out the other side out of our flankies the same way we did the first side. So uh, if you don't remember, rewind this video now. <laughs> Um, but anyway, the, uh, the flaggies are now done. You can see their shape. They're really, really pretty. Uh, a lot of people really love this shape and a lot of people are really scared to make flaggies. Um, but uh, hopefully this video helps you out. That's the end of our second video. Uh, the third video is coming up. We're going to finish the block and uh, make sure to like this video and please subscribe to my YouTube. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments below.